Rachel Meller's aunt and grandparents were among more than 20,000 Jews who fled from the Nazis to China's largest city. Her book, The Box with the Sunflower Clasp, Uncovering a Jewish Family's Flight to Warheim, Shanghai, Wartime Shanghai, is out now. <clears throat> Tell us a bit about what Shanghai would have been like when they arrived then. Well, I've mentioned that the Japanese were in control of all but the foreign settlements. It was pretty chaotic. The Japanese uh, were fighting a sort of battle against the Chinese nationalists, which was why there was a lot of aggression from the Japanese towards Chinese rebels. Um, and I've talked about mm. heads being deposited, decapitated heads yeah. being deposited on doorsteps and a, a lot of gruesome detail that, um, I mean, I know my aunt wrote about having to step over dead babies wrapped in newspaper in the street. Yeah. I mean, the difference from their middle-class, comfortable homes in Leopoldstadt... Mm, it couldn't, um, couldn't be starker. It couldn't be starker. But at that time, although there were Nazis in Shanghai, they didn't have anything against, um, you know, they let the, the Jewish refugees come in and tolerated their presence. And did, did, the, did the sort of the, the tolerance from the, from the Japanese continue? As far as I know, the Japanese treated the Jewish refugees with respect. Mm. They, they were helped by a, a, a New York Jewish financier in 1905 to fund their war against Russia. Mm. And apparently they had a great deal of respect for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And um, right until Pearl Harbor, they did not offer uh, pose a threat mm. to the incoming uh, Jewish refugees. And you write about how a lot of the refugees who arrived there, I mean, they had all the wrong clothes, they brought sort of warm winter clothes and yes, fur coats yes, and stuff. And they yes. and, and dietary matters were also an issue, right? Well, I they certainly tried to recreate as much as possible of the food that they'd left behind, but which was difficult because the Chinese don't eat much dairy and they wanted whipped cream with their uh, sack mm. of daughter if they could make it <laughs> out of whatever was available. Um, the contrast with home was pretty great, but I guess they were so relieved. They didn't know what was going on, of course. Yeah. They didn't know the true horror, but they knew what they'd left behind. Mm. And they were so pleased that they could just try and make a life. And they all saw it as a temporary step. Mm. They did not think they'd be there for maybe 10 years. Yeah. They thought it was just a stepping stone until the war was over, maybe go back or go and live somewhere else, go to America, wherever. Remarkable. Tell us a bit about how you came to this story yourself, because you, you basically found out the story of, of, of your aunt and her family as, as you researched your mother, who passed away when you were a baby, right? T tell us a little yes. bit about that. Well, my aunt, I never knew my mother, so mm. that was a sort of... I wanted to find out a bit more about her and her background. When my aunt died, who was her younger sister, my aunt unexpectedly left me this box with these documents and photographs and postcards. And then after that, I was given a book by an American historian who'd interviewed a dozen or so Shanghai refugees. And my aunt was among them, which was a complete surprise. Mm. She'd never told me that she'd been interviewed. She never told me anything. Like a lot of people from that generation, she didn't want to talk about did, her past. Did you, did you, you knew about the Shanghai connection? I vaguely knew that she'd lived in Shanghai. Right. And I think I'd been given a little tiny gift from my grandmother, a little box with right. a dragon on the night. But nobody ever talked about it, and my aunt never talked about my mother. My mother was a taboo subject right. all the time, which was one of the triggers for trying to research my of aunt's course. family, and my, hence my mother's family. Mm. Um, so together with the book and the things inside box and the wonderful Cambridge University Library, which you all know about yes, very well, indeed, yes. um, I was able to use that as a having studied at Cambridge too. And so your, your mother came to the UK via Paris, having escaped Vienna a bit earlier than the rest, the rest of the family. She did. Tell us about the moment she decided to leave. She, and again, this is something I only discovered through um, someone sending me another American historian's interview with um, my aunt. I did not know this, but my mother, Ilse, was one of the many people forced to scrub the pavements of the um, anti-Nazi propaganda mm. after the Anschluss in March 38. And when I read that, um, I felt quite ill, actually. I yeah. felt very upset about it. Of course, no one had told me that. Mm. Um, to see it there in someone else's interview with my aunt. Um, so I think she de decided there and then uh, she was going to leave Vienna. She was 
about 18 then, so she could travel on her own. Um, it was 1938, so maybe it was easier. She managed to go with some school friends to Paris, but she couldn't get any work there. The other school friends who stayed perished in the Holocaust mm. in, in France. Luckily, my mother managed to um, sail to New Haven and settled in London and met my father, mm. and that's why I'm sure. born in London. And look, you know. your, I mean, your aunt is, uh, your aunt uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, she, um, she seems to have been a very colourful character. Tell us about what, uh, the incident when she was 15 in Vienna, because that's remarkable. Well, you were saying she's colourful. When I knew her, I thought she was anything but colourful, because <laughs> she never told me anything. Mm -hmm. I knew all her life that something, I knew all my life that something bad had happened in her youth in Vienna. She never wore, she always covered up her leg. I knew one of her legs was completely swollen and had been damaged by a fall. Mm. But we never talked about it again. I'd heard the words lift shaft. I'd heard the words she'd thrown herself, but I didn't know over the lift shaft. I, my research led me to a wonderful organisation in Vienna and they researched the Vienna archives and only recently more papers had been scanned by the Vienna archives. I had more and more newspaper reports that weren't available when I started writing the book that described the whole nature of my aunt's accident, mm. which I can either say now or we can leave for the readers to You discuss. know what? Let, it's, it's so good, let's leave it for the readers. Shall we do I think, it? I, I mean, yes. it's so good is a terrible thing to say. It's so, 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 so striking. We want them to find yeah. out, don't we? Look, uh, I'll, I'll let you go in just a moment. Before I do, the story of the Jews who fled to Shanghai, it's not an inconsiderable number of people. We're talking, we're talking you know, sort of quite many thousands. Why do, you, why do you think so few people know it? I, when I decided to start to write this book, I kept asking people if they knew about the story of the mm. Shanghai Jews because I knew my family history was interesting, but I thought, will anyone else be interested in the Shanghai Jews? And about 20,000 lives were saved from you know, the Nazis by these Jews making that four-week journey in a ship or by rail, the other Polish Jews mm. do. Nobody, I think one in 10, one in 20 or even fewer knew of the Shanghai Jews. And I'm talking about Jewish people too. Yeah. I think they didn't. So I thought it must be a story that's worth telling if I tell it right. I hope I have. I think many more people in Australia, Canada and the States know about right. these. But not sure. all of them because that's where the Shanghai Jews went to settle after yeah. the communists took over China. Whereas the traffic, over here, the traffic over here was... was, was they didn't come here. Where. So I yeah. think that's why it's such an unknown story. Yeah. Even my um, publisher, whose husband's Jewish, did not know the story of the Shanghai yeah. Jews. Yeah.